Congratulations, Arsenal's biggest win of the season so far. How enjoyable was that to play in? It was amazing, you know. Uh, I think it was a bit of a slow start, but uh, once the goal started going in, I think everyone started fitting into the game and everyone enjoyed it and it was a great game to play in. You scored your first Arsenal goal against Nottingham Forest. Another two today and an assist. Could your first Premier League appearance since August 2021 have gone much better than that? I, I don't think it could have, you know. I think it's um, one of the things that um, I've been working so hard in training and waiting for my chance. And I'm um, just delighted I got it today and just delighted with the goals and the assists and just really happy about it. You came on for Bakayo Saka. How concerning is that sight, seeing Bakayo Saka <coughs> walk off injured, especially with the World Cup fast yeah. approaching? Of course, he's a key player to us and the nation, you know, and I think uh, hopefully it's nothing serious and we're going to go check now and see if it's OK. But, yeah, he's a great player and great boy and uh, happy to have him in the team. That was the first clean sheet at the Emirates in 11 Premier League games. It's now 11 wins in a row here as well in all competitions. Have you <coughs> successfully turned this stadium into a bit of a fortress? Uh, I don't know about that, you know. Of course, we're going to take every game in our stride and try to do our best for the fans and the gaffer, you know, and just to keep going, take every game as it comes and just try to win everyone. You go back top of the table, <coughs> starting to believe. It's amazing, it's a great sight to see, you know, hopefully we can go all the way, it's nice. Just finally a word on Pablo Marie, obviously the first goal was a tribute to him. How much did that shake you all up on Thursday? What sort of impact did it have on you? Yeah, of course, we, uh, we found out after the after the result, you know, it wasn't a great night on Thursday, we found out as well, so it was really bad, but uh, we done a great gesture for him after, before the game, and of course, a lot of the boys said said their part to him on the phone and stuff, and he's good, and he's, um, yeah, he's a great guy, and just, just unfortunate it happened to him. Yeah, we wish him well. Thank yeah, you, Reese. congratulations today. Thank you very much, cheers. We all endorse that. But what an afternoon he has had. Reese Nelson, patience has been the virtue. Uh, on because Saka was injured, as I say, hadn't played in the Premier League for a year, and he scores two goals in the second half, right? Delighted for him, um, and it's, uh, it's credit to him um, and the, the work he's put in because he's been there for a long time. A lot of people are saying he should have gone loan, do this and that, but he's stayed. Mikel's given everybody an opportunity. If you are impressing and you're working hard, you'll get a chance, and he's obviously done that. He mentioned it in his... Uh, his interview there that you know I'm, I'm just I'm here I'm working hard doing the stuff and he's he's been paid he's been repaid for his uh, his hard work and I'm, I'm pleased for him because he's Arsenal through and through he's desperate to play for Arsenal desperate to prove himself in the first team and this is a, a, a big step in and towards that I'm just delighted for him that's good advantage from the referee actually. very good very good advantage from the referee you know but like um, by this time you know Forrest were, were chasing Arsenal were rampant and, you know, you can see how much time they've got, look how much space he's got, look, time to take it down, do a couple of step-overs. Even there, they don't clear it. And then, you know, he's coming in with loads of time and space and bam. But like, like I say, by then they're gone. But like, from, from, from Reese's point of view, this is brilliant for his confidence and this will just keep him going again. Yeah, I mean, look, he's only 22. Super talented young player, right? He's right. I remember seeing him at the England and 21s and being blown away. This little 20-minute cameo and I thought, whoa. That is really special. Can play off the left, can play off the right. But no matter how talented you are, when you get an opportunity, you need goals. Yeah. You know, goals keep you in a side like Arsenal. That's huge for him. And uh, we just hope Bukayo is okay, is, yeah. is okay because yeah. he, um, he's been fabulous for Arsenal for England. Mm. Reese Nelson got an assist as well. What a strike it was <laughs> from Thomas Partey. Though. Well, we've seen Thomas Partey. It seems like um, this is his party trick. He just comes in late. You see him there just ambling in. And once it gets into this situation, he's just using the players, just guiding it around it. And it's, he's kind of got it off. If you look at that player just in front, he's just guiding it around them two and goalkeeper's got no chance really. He can't see the ball because it's coming around them two and it's, it's hit to perfection, similar to what he scored against Spurs. So I'm delighted for him. You know, Arsenal need goals. They need goals from wherever he can get them from. Unfortunately for Forrest, we kind of give them a bit of a beating today, but that's what we need. We need people getting in the box, taking opportunities to shoot and scoring. That's what Arsenal are going to need. Especially, like again, we've got five goals today and our centre-forward hasn't scored. Everybody's talking about it. So you're just hoping that, you know, this is just something. Because he's got a couple of assists, but we do want our centre-forward scoring as well. Odegaard in on the act as well. So that is a win for Ian Wright's former club. What will Owen Hargreaves' former club do up next? Arsenal, a goal to the good then at half-time against the bottom club Nottingham Forest at the Emirates. And a very fast start it was from your former club as well. Yeah, well, that's what they do. Um, because like we say, we know that they can run out, of, run out of steam in the second half. Like I said, we saw it against Southampton and Leeds, but they start very quickly. You know, Saka was, Saka was causing Lodi a lot of problems. But like it was, um, it was, it was a good move from them because they win the ball back. 
and then it's the speed in which they get it round the other side. This is a great pass by Martinelli. And then Ben White's run outside, and then bam. It's, it's a great ball in, great forward play, getting in front of the defender. But, like, it's, it's, the, it's this one, Owen. It's the speed of this. Bam. So now he's almost got him one-on-one. -on -one. Then he's got to come over Jesse. He's worried about... He's worried about Ben White's run, which is a very good run, and then Martinelli's run is fantastic. Getting across the defender, and fantastic goal. Class, really good. I mean, the ball from Martinelli is great, but this run from Ben White just gives Saka that little moment yes. to get that ball in, yes. and it's uh, you love to see the winger right here from the other side attack that attack area, it. pass it's, it, follow the ball in. It's it's, it's like it's, it's exactly what's needed to be done, and we're, we're getting it right there. This is a nice little you know, tribute to Pablo Mari. You know, but like, yeah, it's, it's, it's the way they've been starting and, you know, Forrest tried to get in that deep block, but Arsenal breached it and so we'll have to see how they go from here. Could, should they have added to that? Well, I think um, when you look, when you, you say should they have added to that, I think that there's been a chance. I think that Jesus had a very, very good chance with the, with the left foot, what we might see, but like here, that just, that's, I think he's got to hit the target there. You know, he's in that form at the moment. He just looks a little bit clunky, the way his body is not shaped properly. You've got to hit the target from that range for me. This is great play from Xhaka, you know. And, you know, I, I think that Lodi does very well getting back on the line. You know, but like, yeah, yeah, you'd like to think that, you know, Arsenal may have had another couple, but what's happened is, is that they haven't taken them. And then we've seen that Forrest has just got a little sting in their tail, you know. So they're going to have to get a little bit more ruthless and start quickly again. One mistake in particular from Gabriel. I mean, yeah, I mean, that, this ball doesn't exist, by the way, the ball he tries to play. <laughs> it just, you, uh, you cannot pass the ball when you win it here. Saliba does amazing. You cannot pass wow. it in there. You just, you just can't. You know, it actually that, looks weird, doesn't that it? Lead, that leads to a goal. I said yeah. that to my son the other yeah. day. Don't pass it in there when in your own box. No. You know, it's just, it's too risky. You know, Saliba does amazing. Nobody wants that. Look, everyone's going, no, 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 no for me. S Saliba, brilliant. Yeah. Uh, I'll tell you what, it's a brilliant block from Ben White, by the way. That, for me, is... That's the only thing that, if you're going to be critical of anyone in Arsenal's defence at the minute, you, you probably say with someone like Gabriel, he does things that just makes you a bit nervy. And that's another one there. Gabriel Jesus, 490 mm. minutes without yeah. a Premier League goal now. You've had a look at him in that first half. What have, what, what have you noticed? I noticed that you can see why. You know, he, he seems to be attracted to the ball. I can't understand why he would want to be coming here. There's no reason for him to do that. I'd rather him be up there where the line is, where you can see where there's the defenders, there's no one on him. And just stay up there because we've got enough players that can do that. That's what you want him to do. Occupy that man in the middle there and let people get on with it because there's enough space that if he does occupy them, he could get in this he could get in there because if you look at this one steve when the ball comes here look he can make that run that's where you want him and that's where the defender look you can see the defender behind him he's already uh, is he going behind me no and he's coming for he's coming more and more towards the get look look getting drawn more and more towards it to do that i i can't that's that's not what we want him for that's not what i believe he should do i think he's in a very good position here when the ball comes to him makes a good run can't quite make, he doesn't quite make the pass. He doesn't make the pass, in fact, Xhaka. And then here, now we're seeing him, he's coming towards it. I'd rather him be back in there already because now, when the ball's here, when Erdegaard turns, look at that space in the box. If he was just in the middle there because that defender would have to come. He's still on the edge, still on the edge, and he gets the shot, but it's, it's for me, it's speculative and he's leaning back and he's pouring. When you look at those instances, you can see why it's not quite happening for him because he's not in a place where he's getting chances where he can continue to try and score the chances that he gets. One worry for Arsenal and Bakayo Saka in particular is the reason he's had to go off. Everything crossed that this isn't serious. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you definitely hope not. He's such a fabulous young player. I don't, you know, he, he, I think he twists his ankle very awkwardly. He just falls underneath him. Lodi's mm. just trying to tackle. There um, it is, yeah. Yeah, and I think he just... Let's hope... Let's hope he's all right. I'd have him start for England on the right-hand side. <coughs> I just think he's... I played Phil Foden as a number 10, mm. but you can see he was limping. He played on when he probably shouldn't have. It looks like... It, you see it there? Oh, it yeah. looked like his ankle went in, and I think he might have tweaked the inside yeah. of the knee. So he doesn't... He looks upset, but it's one of those, like we saw with Varane, you know, when, when you know it's getting this close to, like, the, the tournament, he's not... He doesn't look destitute. He doesn't look like, oh, my God, this is going to cause me a problem for the World Cup. But at the same time... We're, what, three weeks away, and it's the inside of the knee. Hopefully, it's not too bad. Come along, then, two cracking games for your Match Day Live today, all in the company of Owen Hargreaves and Ian Wright. And the big question is, in our first game, will your former club go back to the top of the table? First time in a few weeks they've been knocked off. Yeah, I hope so.
Um, you know, it's, it's what it's about now. You know, we've seen our... Unfortunately for Liverpool, they, they don't seem to be able to chase them down at the minute. It seems to have fallen in Arsenal's laps to try and stay with them. And it's a game against a team, although they've improved a bit defensively, not in Forest. At home, you, you've got to be looking to win the game to then put the pressure back on Manchester City. I know it's early, but getting ready for the World Cup and that you want to try and keep the momentum going. So I think it's a big game in that respect for Arsenal to try and make sure that they, um, they can win this game. Another type of test at the moment, because... As right, he says, they are the team closest to City at the moment. And a game at home here where all the expectation is on them to go and win. Yeah, and they should win. You know, they've got, they got a great young team. I love watching. There's so many parts of this team that I actually love watching. So many great players. Credit Mikel Arteta. You know, they've been amazing. Nine wins, one draw, one loss. I mean, that is just... So far, they've been the best team in the league for me. And this is a must-win game at home. You'd expect them to go and win and actually win quite comfortably. And is, but is that a different type of mental pressure for these young players when, when everyone expects them to win and win comfortably? Yeah, but this is what they're all playing there for. This is what Mikel's trying to build there. And this is what happened last season when they got into that situation where they needed to beat Tottenham and Newcastle to get into the Champions League and they fell. Um, people saying they haven't got the backbone, they haven't got the leaders, they haven't got the the mental strength, and that's what it's about, you know, is, is, is gaining that. So you're hoping from last season, Steve, that they can, they can take, the, um, the, the take what they learned from there and bring it into this season, because if you do want to challenge a City or a Liverpool, wherever it's going to be, you have to be able to, at home, teams come into your place and they're bottom of the league, whatever's happening in the respects of their form, you have to beat them, because that's what champions do, or teams who are trying to become champions or be elite, you have to beat these teams. And so I'm hoping that they can do that. Do you see them as the closest team to City over a period of time? So far? I mean. I mean, it's a small body of work, 11 games, but you'd say, yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't think even before the season, Arsenal... Right, would you have said before the season that Arsenal could be no. you know, competing to win the league? No, but the point is you get there, you get a young team, add a bit of an experience... They've had good experiences so far outside of the game at Old Trafford, mm. but they played pretty well. Mm. So, really, now they're in a position where they... Right, he's right. They've got to start winning these games and win them comfortably to be, be taken as serious as they are. But they've done fabulous. 12 games in to be playing this well, this consistent, <coughs> they showed they're the real deal. You know, the thing is, one worry, though, oh, with um, Steve, is, um, is the second half of games for some reason. Arsenal start well, and it's something that Forrest, if they've done their homework, they'll see. I think the last time Arsenal, what was it, scored... I think the last time they scored in the second half of the game was against Tottenham in the derby. And when they have scored for... When they have conceded first against United, they've lost. And I'm, I'm seeing there's a pattern where we're starting well and we're fading off. We saw it against Southampton and Leeds. And it's something that's worrying. We're seeing with Jesus and, um, you know, he's not scored in a few games now. And it's a little bit of a worry because on the left side as well, we haven't got that thrust of Tierney. No Zinchenko at the moment. Tommy Asu's there doing a left-sided job, but we're not getting that thrust. And so there's, 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 at the moment, there's concerns in that respect. What happens if we don't score early? What happens if Forrest do score? We haven't scored in the second half of games. Forrest will make it tough. So there is, there, there are some kind of pitfalls to this as well, where it's not going to be as easy as we think. But again, you've got to overcome these things. Interesting that the, for the fourth game running, they are unchanged. Of course, they gave away a lead in their last league game against Southampton. Mm. Is, is that the consistency that, he, that he's looking for well, at the moment? Well, yeah, well, well, it's a young team and we're starting well and we're starting fast. But yeah, you need that. You need to know that, you know, in the game, you can get stronger in the game, not weaker, because then what you'll find is that as the game goes on, Forrest will come at you. And then, you know, you'll go deeper and deeper and bring the pressure on. So you're hoping that, you know, Arsenal can nick the first few goals early doors. But at the moment, they say, there's, you know, Jesus isn't, as, as, uh, hasn't scored in six. We need some more, maybe from uh, Bakayo Saka and, and Martinelli. We just need to chip in. We know that Granite Jack is scoring at the minute. But it's, it's just a situation where they need to get through this. Te it's a test in time for them. This, and this is what it's about being up there. Right, so you make a great point. I mean, you look at the back four there, that's mm. four centre-backs. Mm. You know, the full-backs yeah. have become such an important position in terms of assists. That's four centre-backs doing, doing a, a great job. And then Partey in front. So a lot of pressure on Udegaard and mm. Saka, and Martinelli and Jesus to, to create the goals. So if they have a bad day or a dry day, you know, they're not really getting those numbers from those defensive positions. And you know the thing as well, we can't take, we can't take for granted the, the, the Europa League and how that is having an effect on the team. Because I'm sure with someone like Emil Smith-Rowe, it gives us thrust on that left-hand side. He could have rested a couple. 
Same with El Nenny, whatever anybody thinks about. I think El Nenny's brilliant for us yeah, like to freshen that. it up a little bit so as you can get somebody who can control the game. Because at the moment we can't with Zinchenko not being there as often as we'd, we'd like it to. So someone like El Nenny comes in and he can take care of the ball. And you've got people like Emma Smith Rowe who can then get on the left and give us more thrust. And at the moment we can't change that around. So we're using those players in Europa League and obviously against PSV that wasn't a great result for us because we n now need against Zurich to make sure that we, we win it. You wanted to get some rest and some rotation. At the moment, Arsenal can't do that. 